much. Uh, like you said, my name is Michael Moore. Um, I'm a graduate at the at JSU for uh, for getting an MFA in the art department. Um, what I want to talk to you today about is we're going to explore the process and the technique of building the clamshell case. Uh, you might wonder to yourself, what is I'll go to the next button. I got those buttons. Okay. What is a clamshell case? Um, and when I first started getting interested in books, I was all these cases and didn't know what a clamshell case was, and I got confused. Uh, so I'm going to go through, and this is right here, you get a quick shot of what a clamshell case is. So what it, what's the purpose of a clamshell case is it's a book form case used for storing manuscripts, maps, prints, documents, old or precious books, or any other of those sorts. Um, it's commonly used for archives, print rooms, uh, libraries. Uh, you may have seen them here. Uh, the case is usually usually constructed of a hardcover. It has a hinged lid connected to the base. The exterior is um, covered with a heavy paper, a fabric, or a leather. Uh, while the interior can be lined with a decorative paper, a uh, felt, or book cloth. Um, and just to make another correction on that, um, the exterior can also be covered with a very nice book cloth also. So constructing a clamshell case is actually extremely complicated, complex, if I might say. There's a great deal of instructions that you have to follow is so in order for it to, to fit perfectly because what you're doing is you're fitting a book inside of a case. It has to be snug. So when you open it, it fits. It doesn't open too quickly, but yet you don't have to, it's not hard to pull apart. So you're following exact measurements from a book, from the trays, so what we have here is one of the first steps you do, it's extremely important, is to make sure that you measure first your book that you plan to make a, create a case for. So for instance, if this were my book that I was going to create a case for, what I would do is I would measure the length, the width, but also the thickness. The thickness is going to be really important because that's going to be the crucial part for the spine. Once, you've made, once you have those measurements, what you do in step two is you create the small tray. Um, this is where the book will actually sit with inside that small tray. Um, the process for this, while I'm, while I'm thinking about it, is each step is extremely involved. So when you, hit, when you make that small case, you have to sit and you let it dry. And because you're using, a, well, you're using a PVA glue, and the best thing to do is to let it dry for a period of time, sometimes almost several hours, almost an entire day. So you're waiting for that one small tray to dry. Once you've waited long enough for that tray to dry, then you can go back and you can actually cover it with a book cloth and get your sides. Then you wait for that to dry. So I'm not going to go through every single drying process because it's a great, there's a lot involved. Uh, if you're not, if you're like me and not a very patient person, this has taught me a great deal of patience, because it can take it, it can take almost three, two, two days, two three days, just for it was probably only about three by five, very small. Um, just and this was my very first one here that I did, that you're seeing. Uh, but once you get that done for your first initial that your book will actually sit in, what you want to do is then you take the measurement of the tray itself. You've already got the book measured, now you take the small tray and you measure the length, the width, and the thickness or the height of the tray. And that's where you get the measurements for your large tray. So you've got these two different measurements and the reason why is because that large tray has to sit on top of the small tray, that the small tray holds the book. Everything kind of, it's all little, these little puzzle pieces. Uh, there's very um, important details that, you know, if you miss it, it almost affects down the line to when you get to the end of it. Um, so you create your large tray from the measurements from the smaller tray. Um, so once you get this, as you can see, you want to make sure that before you actually attach it to the, the case, you want to make sure that they fit. As long as they fit and you don't have to pry it apart or it just doesn't fall apart, that means you've got a good snug fit for your case, for your book to be held into. So go ahead and you want to put those together. Then your fifth step, and even though I have 
eight little steps. These are probably the most important steps because there's so much involved, you know, with finding the material, wrapping everything, these intricate cuts to, for, for folds. Um, I'm taking out, because we could probably be here all day trying to figure out how to do, you would lose patience, I would lose patience. Um, so, but the end result is actually a beautiful, you get this really beautiful end result. But when you, you're doing the final part for the case that the trays will sit on, you need to measure your largest case. The large case, you get the dimensions from there, and it depends on your preference. For me, I like an eighth inch overlap. So you get a nice lip so you can kind of pull the case open. So you get an eighth inch um, more than whatever you've measured in addition to. Once you get that measured, you go ahead and you measure the thickness of the trays. Once you have the measure of the thickness of the trays, then you can find, as you can see, you get your spine. That's one reason I had said it's important to have that spine as a correct measurement because if you don't, it won't fit. And I'll talk about that problem in just a minute because I actually ended up making that mistake in this one. Um, I actually, once you've attached them with your PVA glue, of course you let it sit. Everything's pressed. Sometimes you may want to sit, let it sit for a day. Uh, when it comes to bookmaking, the longer you let it sit, the better hold you have. Um, so but once you get your two trays on the case, you can go ahead and you can close it. Now the problem with this one, with the very first one I had, is I was an eighth inch off on my spine. Because I was an eighth inch off on the spine, you really can't see it here, but there was an eighth inch gap. It didn't close. You need to be flush with the case. So for instance, this is actually a case that I've made. And as you can see, it needs to be flush all the way around. It needs to sit flat. And it needs to make sure that it opens very nicely. And what it does is it holds your books in place. Now this one specifically has a double tray. That was one thing that I had to figure out on my own. I had to solve the problem of how to create a double tray instead of just a single tray. So when you close it, you also want it to have, it just kind of falls down very nicely. Now once you've made the, once you've made the case, uh, I want to show you just some examples of some other things that I've worked on uh, for this, for my independent study. Uh, this is the one you actually just saw. It. Uh, this is actually produced with uh, papyrus paper. Uh, it is hand pressed. I didn't hand press it, but it's handmade papyrus paper. Uh, and what I did, I actually stained it also. I used a different staining process that most people, you know, you think of staining it within tea or anything else. Um, I actually came across from another class, uh, but I stained it with a little bit of walnut ink, soy sauce, and balsamic vinaigrette. And it gives it a nice tanning color. I know it sounds strange every time you open this, I get a whiff of Chinese food. <laughs> you know? um, but it's interesting because it really adds to the experience. Um, so, but you get this really nice stain with the papyrus and how it reacts to, to these different uh, mediums that you use. So here's, you can see a close-up of the double tray that I had to create. I had to solve the problem of how I was going to make that um, stable enough. So there, I had to even do more measurements. I had to measure each accordion. That's an accordion book right here. I mean, just so you can see, just the inside, I'll just go very quickly. It's a, a, this is the inside of it. And actually, you can still see all the staining is the balsamic vinaigrette included with the soy sauce, but also with the walnut ink inside. Um, I have some, some painting in there. The sides, the covers are also papyrus paper. And this is the second uh, accordion that's inside of it. Um, and these two fit inside the case. And the case is meant to protect these books. Uh, this is another one that I created. Uh, just uh, Actually, it was the second one after that small black box. And I came up with the problems that I come across and why I need to make sure that all my measurements were exact. Uh, this was the second one that I did. 
And I was extremely detailed and very careful with all my measurements. So this one actually came out correct. Uh, but it was also done, instead of using papyrus, I went ahead and it's covered in a decorative paper, used strictly walnut ink. Um, I dyed it, um, used a little bit of yellow just to give it color. I mean, it's got a cloth spine to match the cloth spine in the pamphlet stitch. Uh, it's also wrapped in paper instead of the papyrus, but you have to be careful. Depending on what materials you use, um, like a fabric is going to be much stronger than the paper because once the paper gets wet with glue, it becomes very delicate. And if you pull too hard to get your creases in your folds, what will happen is your paper tears. I actually had that happen a couple times with this one, but I was able to save the, the binder's board uh, so I didn't have to throw away. So, so this, is, this is one of them. Um, what are the major problems you run into? One of the ideas that I had wanted to try to create was to create a very thick case. And the reason why I brought this one was because it initially was going to be a case-bound book. But because of the thickness of this case, this cover right here, it wasn't going to allow me to fold correctly. It was, there was too much depth between, you can't see it, and I wish I would have actually brought the pictures for it. There was too much depth for the paper to bend over, and it didn't leave it enough room once you added the cases. And it seemed extremely inconsistent and almost wonky because it was too large for the book. You had a small, thin book, but you had this large, thick case to it. So I ended up um, kind of solving the problem how to use it differently. Uh, but these are your basic steps on how to produce a case um, for a clamshell case for any kind of book. Uh, it's, a, it's a tedious process, like I said, but your end results actually turn out to be really beautiful. Um, once you learn the basics of how to use it, you're, you're free to design however you choose. There's all types of different types of cases. Um, I've only just hit just the very beginning of, of how to produce these cases. Um, but that, this, is, this is the case. Thank you very much.